Hi guys, we are welcome once again to the Smart Way Lectures on the Science Ambassador Series. This is a series of lectures we are running on all the areas in science. And today we are here with you to continue on thermochemistry, also called energy energy changes. In this lecture, we are going to look at the standard entropy of formation and its connection to thermal stability. We are going to look at the standard entropy of formation and its connection to thermal stability. And so, in our last lectures, I gave you some examples of standard entropy of formation. I gave you that when it says standard entropy of formation, it is the amount of energy change or the entropy change when one mole of a substance, when one mole of a substance is formed from its constituent element in their standard state, okay, at standard conditions. When one mole of a substance, when you have one mole of this, okay, formed from its elements that are in the definite states okay under standard conditions that's what we said it is standard entropy of formation and i gave you three examples i gave you this, this first equation and the second one and the third one so this is what we mean by standard entropy of formation formation when one mole of a substance this is a glucose that is being formed glucose that is being formed and this glucose is formed from its three element it three constituent element and the first element is carbon which exists as solid at room temperature or which exists okay in its definite state as solid and hydrogen also exists at gas okay at its what definite state and oxygen too also exists as gas in its definite state so the energy required or change when one mole of glucose this is formed from its constituent element in their definite state and under what standard conditions now this is the next one when you also form one mole of sodium chloride so this is another one one mole of sodium chloride when you form one mole of sodium chloride okay form its constituent element the, the element that forms sodium chloride are sodium solid and the chlorine gas so when you combine sodium solid plus chlorine gas the energy that you require to form one mole of the sodium chloride is what we call the entropy of formation and the last one we also went to the carbon the formation of carbon dioxide that there are two basic elements we have the carbon that exists as solid okay and we also have oxygen that also exists at what at, at as gas okay at ordinary conditions or at room what temperature and so that is what we mean by that so when you form one mole of a substance form its definite element that is one mole of carbon dioxide form its definite element you have what you call the standard entropy of what of formation now we are also going to look at the relationship we we again did the relationship between the uh, the entropy change and the what the entropy of what formation we said that the relationship that exists between the entropy okay change as uh, the entropy chain in every reaction or in every reaction is the change in the entropy of the product minus the change in the entropy of the reactant so if you want to find the entropy change for this formation reaction okay for this formation reaction it is going to be is, is going to be one the entropy change for this reaction let me change the color the entropy change for this reaction will be the entropy chain for this reaction is equal to one the standard entropy of the standard entropy of formation of all products the standard entropy of formation of all products okay of all products minus the standard entropy as the standard entropy this sign represents standard entropy okay of formation of all what reactants of all reactants of all reactants okay so mathematically if you want to do that you are going to get the standard entropy for formation is equal to the standard entropy of formation is equal to one the product how many product we have only one product so we are going to get the standard entropy of formation of glucose that is the one product that we have so standard entropy of formation of glucose 
so that is one mole of glucose so we have one mole of glucose here now minus the standard enthalpy of all reactants and the reactants we have one two three reactants so the standard enthalpy of all reactants so we are going to get standard enthalpy of all reactants so we are going to get one of all reactants so let's just add of what six carbon solid plus six hydrogen gas okay then plus three oxygen what oxygen gas okay plus three oxygen gas so this is the formula so for every chemical reaction there is what we call enthalpy change and the enthalpy change is found by subtracting the sum of all reactants from the sum of all products and so this is what i have given so the sum of all energy change of re uh, reactants that is all reactants from all products and so this in this equation we have one product and we have three reactants and so if you want to find the change in enthalpy you just have to subtract the enthalpy of formation for all reactants which we have carbon hydrogen and what and and oxygen from all products we have only one product here so when you do the subtraction if you want to find the enthalpy chain when you want to do the subtraction then you subtract three okay the enthalpy chain of, for, for, for formation of three reactants carbon which is here the hydrogen which is here and the oxygen also which is here so all that you subtract that from what for the enthalpy this one will give you the value you you they will give you the specific values okay in the question you just have to do your subtraction it is very important to know that for enthalpy chain it is always the sum of all reactants from the sum of all products so that is how to find the enthalpy chain now let me also give you this one okay let me also give you this one quickly so let me write the So let me also give you this one. So the, the standard enthalpy chain or the enthalpy chain for the reaction for this particular reaction is again the enthalpy chain of the product minus the enthalpy chain for the word for the reactant. And here we have one product and we have what two reactants. And so therefore it implies that if I want to do that, I'll have I'll subtract. I have the enthalpy chain for this particular reaction for this formation reaction this particular reaction is equal to one we have the the standard enthalpy change okay for formation of the sodium chloride itself that is the sodium itself the sodium itself solid okay minus the standard enthalpy for formation of all what reactants for all reactants and so how many reactants we have three reactants the first one is sodium which exists as a solid and then how it is what minus that is plus half of the chlorine gas okay the chlorine gas so here yeah, they will give you the value they will give you the value all you have to do is to subtract all the summation of all reactants from all products okay and you will get the enthalpy chain for the reaction so these were some of the few things that we did uh, in our last video now in uh today we will want to connect the stability of chemical reactions to enthalpy of formation okay we want to connect that okay so we are going to connect the enthalpy of formation to thermal stability now it is very important that in all reactions there is what we call endothermic reaction and exothermic reaction for all reactions there is what we call endothermic and exothermic reaction the reaction either have to absorb energy from the surrounding to start the reaction or the reaction will can liberate energy to the surrounding and so which okay which of these reactions are favorable which of these reactions are feasible and natural or spontaneous we are going to look at these two reactions and how okay they are they lead to the stability of what of compounds okay we are going to look at that now naturally naturally 
systems tend to move from a point of higher instability to a point of higher stability now it is this is a natural process that occurs in every day now a system once again or a chemical reaction once again tend to move for, from a point of higher instability to a point of what higher stability now this can be demonstrated by heating water okay now after heating water you when you allow the water to stand you will see that the hot water will spontaneously or naturally okay give heat to the surrounding and will become what cold at the end of the day now nobody is what altering changing anything nobody is changing anything but just after the heating what will happen is that the hot water will become highly unstable the hot water will become highly unstable and because of that high instability it would want to move from a point of higher instability to a point of higher stability now a point of higher instability in all chemical reaction is a point of higher energy okay so when particles have higher energy they begin to move faster they begin to vibrate and so therefore why they would want to what to be stable by naturally giving hope or what heat to the surrounding and what and become stable so you can see this that this is a two systems okay now one is a what boiled water that is boiled water okay that is this one is the hot water there now when you leave this hot what when you leave this hot water for some time you realize that the hot water will dissipate energy okay and will become stable okay so in all chemical reactions once again all chemical reaction proceed in a direction as to what to minimize the energy of the system here the energy of this hot water is high okay and so it will move from a position of high what energy to a position of what lower energy so that is what we mean by what we call the, 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 the stability so when you look at this reaction you can see that there are two processes here okay there's what we call the exothermic what process and what we call the endothermic process now the endothermic pro the exothermic process is a more feasible process in that when you leave the hot water okay for some time the hot water will spontaneously or will naturally give out heat to the surrounding or liberate energy to the surrounding and and so therefore will end up with what a lower heat content and the lower heat content of such reaction okay and we what highest what stability and so naturally 90 percent of all reaction would want to give up their heat and end up with what to have a lower heat or lower energy and this direction is what we call the what the spontaneous direction where a system tends to move from a point of higher energy or a point of higher instability to a point of what uh, lower energy which also means the point of what higher stability now when you look at the forward reaction okay the forward reaction as we explained is more feasible the hot water will give off heat to the surrounding but when you look at the backward reaction where the cold water okay want to become hot okay there is a lot of energy there's a lot of work that the, uh, that the cold water will want to do okay, okay will have to do before it, it become hot, hot and so the cold water naturally becoming the hot water well it's not as it's not it's not a natural or feasible process so that reaction will not usually happen so endothermic reaction that proceed from a point of higher stability to a point of higher what instability is not a feasible it's not a natural process that is why almost 90 percent of all reactions are all what exothermic reaction they proceed from a point of higher energy to a point of what lower energy okay or a point of higher stability uh, instability to a point of what higher instability so that is what explains that so if uh, any reaction occurs that release higher energy then that reaction okay is what more stable okay than compared to the reaction that release what less energy yeah so let's look at this question quickly so that we can understand this concept now they say that given the following entropy of formations state giving reasons which in each pair is more stable state giving reasons which in each pair is more stable so we have the first one as hydrogen iodide gas now this is the entropy okay change in the formation of hydrogen iodide the entropy change in the formation of hydrogen iodide and this is the value and it is a positive value and for the formation of ammonia ammonia gas we have this value over here that is negative 146 okay kilojoules per mole 
negative 146 kilojoules per mole. In the second one, we have we have hydrogen nitrate. Okay, we have hydrogen nitrate in the liquid form, and this is the energy required to form the the hydrogen nitrate in a liquid form. We also have the same hydrogen nitrate, and in this time we have a gaseous one, and the gas required this amount of energy. So let's quickly look at that. Now, in our lecture, we said that reactions that produce or liberate more energy to the surrounding tend to produce a more stable product. Reactions that tend to produce or liberate more energy to the surrounding tend to produce more stable product. And we said that for for exothermic reactions, okay, the the enthalpy change is always negative. For exothermic reactions, the enthalpy change is always negative. And so comparing these two, okay, the hydrogen iodide, okay, and then the ammonia, you can see that here the enthalpy change for the formation of the hydrogen iodide is positive, and here it's negative. And even the science itself should tell you that for all exothermic reactions are more stable than endothermic reactions. I told you that reactions that tend to liberate more energy to the surrounding, okay, the reaction that tends to liberate more energy to the surrounding is more stable or more feasible or likely to occur than reactions that would want to absorb energy from the surrounding, okay? So that is what they So the negative value for the formation of ammonia simply implies that this, okay, uh, um, uh, this ammonia, formation of ammonia is more stable than the formation of hydrogen what, uh, iodine because the negative one six okay the negative one four six is the amount of energy liberated to the surrounding walls forming the ammonia and this is the positive value for the hydrogen what iodide is the amount of energy what uh, that will be absorbed into the reaction in order to form that and the absorption reaction is not a feasible process it's not a spontaneous process it's not a natural process but the liberation reaction is what we call the what the natural process which is the negative value now let's go to the, the the liquid nitrate and then the gaseous nitrate in the formation of the liquid nitrate the hydrogen nitrate what happened there is this is the value the negative 206 now and then we have this you can see that this negative 206 okay and this this negative value is bigger than this negative value okay this negative value is more okay it's bigger than this negative value. in terms of the amount of energy liberated please in terms of the amount of energy liberated okay the negative there just tells us the amount of energy liberated the negative please the negative sign just tells us the amount of energy liberated and so you can see that in the formation of the liquid what uh, hydrogen nitrate more energy was given off to the surrounding and so therefore that where well, that product that will form will be more stable product and will be more what a uh, feasible product as compared to reaction that will reduce less or uh, liberate less energy to the surrounding and so what have you noticed here that the signs okay the positive signs mean, mean that energy is absorbed into the reaction which is an endothermic reaction and the reactions are not feasible they are not natural they are not likely to occur as compared to the negative one one and with the one that have higher negative value is more feasible than the one that have less negative value because the one that have negative value more negative value just suggests that more energy is given out that will lead to the formation of a more stable product so that is the meaning of this question and in and in, 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 in connection to what this concept. Thank you.